I'm Fred Cook. I've come to speak to you about Git source control by Linus Torvalds. <laughs> this is Richard's idea. <laughs> Git is a version control system that's managing a set of, sorry, change in a set of files over time. Other terms are version control, version control, source control, and source code management. It's not restricted to source code. Roman can keep his love letters in there too. Uh, Linus Torvalds created Git uh, after the Bitkeeper fiasco where the license was revoked. There was no source control for the kernel, and that was quite important. Uh, it was self-hosting after only a few days, and after a few months, they released the first kernel version with it. Since then, it's been developed rapidly, has a strong community, and ever-growing popularity, for good reason. Traditional systems such as CDS, SVN, Perforce, etc., are often linear in terms of the development cycle, which it makes branching and merging difficult and expensive, and often centralized, which means they're thus slow and uh, restrictive. Um, they work except for Sorry, they don't work except for simple and linear stuff. Distributed but app version control systems are a little different. Uh, most stuff centralized in the transaction to the server, but distributed is not like that at all. It's a complete system, but each copy with a full history, which uh, provides replication by default and no single point of failure because everyone's copy is a backup. Uh, some common commands revert, reset, status, status, commit, commit minus A. Run to tag, extremely long URL, extremely long URL, and there's not enough room to show you how to do a tag. What's up, vision? Um, some nifty features of Git. If you have some current changes that you're not ready to share and you want to do a commit and push that to somebody else, you can use stash and stash apply to take those changes, put them aside out of the way, and then apply them back after you've made some further changes. Uh, you can commit single lines or subsets of lines out of a file that you've modified. Uh, branching was considered difficult and expensive, uh, but in Git, every copy is a branch. So branching is literally instantaneous branch, new name, done. Uh, it's easy, it's cheap, and right now I have 10 branches on my application, release development features, blah, blah, blah. Uh, merging is also easy because Git has a rich tree-based uh, history, as opposed to something like Subversion 28 history, which allows the merging algorithms to do it largely automatically. Uh, you can merge more branches, you can have more branches, and Linus does a large number of branches every day. That's a graph of some of my merging. <coughs> it's ideal for collaboration between distributed parties uh, because of the fast and easy branching and merging. That still works when you're unplugged, so you can do work on a plane on train, etc. You don't need permission, you can take a copy without setting up a username, and if they don't want your changes, they won't take them. Um, <coughs> reliably, Torvalds designed it, so we say it's awesome. <laughs> it has strong hashes for <coughs> the commits, which cover the whole structure and the back end, <coughs> which stops tampering, corruption, vandalism, etc. <coughs> That's content progress, not per file, so chunks of files. It's extremely high performance, uh, space efficient, it does shallow copies for branches and uses hard links as much as possible. Uh, when it's sending between two nodes, it uses compression a lot to keep the bandwidth down because CPU is cheap and bandwidth is enough. An entire Git repo with a full history is approximately equal to a SVN checkout. Uh, flexible. You can work in a variety of ways, including the old centralized model where you just push constantly in place. Excuse me. Uh, what else can we do? You can work the way you want to. Put it without your glass of water. And this is what you typically do on an open source project. You create something, you push it up to the server copy, a couple of people take other server copies, and they pull that down, and start working on it. Um, that can happen thousands of times. So Ruby on Rails has about 600 branches, or something like that. Different people different things on them. So once you've got that, you make your changes locally, commit, 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 push up. <coughs> and if the original guy wants it, he can take yours and you can take his. 
as changes happen over time on multiple different locations. <coughs> that London air is fantastic. <laughs> uh, delegation. Well, for Linus developing the kernel, obviously there are thousands of contributors, and if he had to do all of the merging and work, <coughs> that would be a significant task and nothing would ever happen. <coughs> so what happens is you have a tree structure and a network of trust, whereby you take changes from, say, half a dozen people, and each of those the same to the next guy. Things using Git, uh, kernel, one that top child, <coughs> Xorg, Wine, the Google Android phone, Eclipse, Ruby on Rails, Perl, KDE. KDE. Recently. Yep. That would have been a somewhat large undertaking. KDE's was a gig or something. Um, only one serious competing tool, sorry Tim. That's Mercurial, which was developed by another kernel developer about the same time. NetBeans, Mozilla, OpenSlash, <coughs> JDK, and the Zine kernel are all hosted on Mercurial. The others are old, slow, unreliable, commercial, dark, bizarre, sorry. Monotone, uh, the keeper. Uh, weaknesses, integration IDEs, not so good, but not bad. Windows environment, you have to use a, uh, a wrapper shell. The flexibility is also uh, puts complexity on your plate. 130 binaries instead of a single one. <coughs> Always considered hard to use, but not anymore so much. Always use version control. Fast, safe, unique, flexible, reliable, powerful, distributed, and did I mention fast? <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Um, 